the deep web, the dark web. You probably have heard these terms all that often, but you may not really know what they mean. I mean, pop culture and cinemas have blown these out of proportion and misinformed you in every way possible. But in this video, let's try to understand what they actually are. First, you have to understand what web really means. It's a software running on a server that's interconnected to a bunch of computers, which is nothing but the hardware connections we call as the internet. Web contains all the different protocols by which these computers communicate with one another. So in short, internet is the hardware connections and web is the software that runs on top. A web browser is an application that decodes these web pages based on what your request is and it shows you the data. And you know this one property of software, right? It can be modified. Meaning that if one person has developed a software in a certain way, someone with equal knowledge can take that and modify it in any way they like. So if there's one version of my website which anyone can access, but I want to keep another version of the website which only a certain people with certain tools can access, I can do that. Before we get into all of that, let's understand the layers with a simple analogy. Think of the entire web as a swimming pool. It's a pretty deep pool with a bunch of people watching from the uh, shores or the surfaces and there are a couple of them swimming in there. These people are equivalent of browsers. A few layers of water everyone can see, even those who are standing outside of water. This can be called as a surface web, meaning that it's a website that anyone can access without any credentials. So for instance, facebook.com, youtube.com, anyone can visit that without having a username or password. So this means every other website or web page which is protected by a password is considered as a part of deep web. That includes your Facebook profiles as well. So the search engines can't directly access your profile because that's a security thing. I shouldn't be able to search your profile and change your profile picture, right? That shouldn't happen because it's hiding behind a layer of password protection. Only after you have been successfully authenticated with your username and password, these websites are shown to you, like uh, the option to change your profile picture, change your date of birth, whatever. Even you cannot change them without your own password. And that's what makes it a part of deep web. And that is why people say that 95% of the web is deep web. That is true because youtube.com is just one website. Every other hundreds of thousands of millions of profiles that are in YouTube are all protected by password. So they are all part of deep web. Yep, it's really as simple as that. Deep web isn't exactly notorious for crimes or whatever because your own Instagram or Facebook profile is a part of deep web. If you logged into Facebook or Instagram today, congratulations, you use deep web. But then there is a certain part of deep web which is in the deepest darkest corners which is not visible to any of the web browsers. Going back to our swimming pool analogy, even people who are in the swimming pool in the surface layers can't see the bottom because it's so dark. You need special gear like oxygen masks or whatever to go to that depth. In other words, you need a browser that's capable of navigating all these websites which are not publicly available. So again, as I said, web is just a software. If someone wanted to make their own version of web, they can. And these websites fall under dark web. These are the type of websites that you don't really find their names floating around in public DNS. Tor Browser is one of the more popular options that you can use to get to one of these dark web websites. Mainly because most of these dark websites are in the Tor network itself. You see, Tor network is a protected network of a bunch of computers that's not really understandable for normal browsers. We'll talk about the working of Tor and the layered encryption in another video, but just understand that Tor has three separate servers or three computers which bounce your request from one to another until they finally get to their destination. And what most of these admins of these dark dark web do is that they keep their web server as a part of the Tor network. So only another Tor node, which is nothing but a computer running the Tor server software, can get to. And of course, as I said, these websites will be protected under a password or a secret passphrase. So even if you get to those places with Tor, you need to know that secret passphrase to get in. The whole point of a dark web website is to be anonymous and secret, shielded away from the surface web. These websites also have a slightly different kind of domain name. They don't usually have the .coms and .nets that you see. They may have something like .onion, which you may recognize from other websites. And as you can imagine, as the surface web has no way of getting here, so a normal Chrome browser user is nowhere near this place, the people who do know how to navigate to this place can pretty much engage in any activity and get away with it. So yeah, I guess in a way those movies were a little bit true, like the dark web is used for criminal activities, but you know, it's not a completely known fact that 100% of the dark web is meant for criminal activities. 
it's definitely a large portion of it but you know the concept is cool regardless so to recap uh, web is made up of three layers surface web and deep web and deep web has another layer which is even more hidden which is known as the dark web any browser that can connect to the internet can get to the surface web so any website that has a public dns uh, something like facebook.com or whatever can be accessed with that network the same browser can also access parts of the deep web like i said if you log into your profile that then goes into the deep web so it's on the same server but it's sitting behind a layer of password protection so the same browser can be used for that but anything that's supposed to be hidden from the surface web aka the deep web websites they will need a separate browser that can dive deeper and that's where the multi-layered encryption of tor comes into picture it not only protects you but also protects the website that you're visiting now this is not 100% foolproof there are ways of getting caught even when you're inside the tor network so it's not invisible at all times i'll make another video as i said uh, explaining the vulnerabilities but this is what you need to understand for now i hope this clears out any doubts or misconceptions you've had about what exactly dark web is oh and here's a secret i want you to know if you subscribe to this channel and join our discord from the description you'll instantly become a level 3 hacker.